it's fascinating to me that the the objective was always the Royal Shakespeare Company. Yes, and you were oh, yeah. not you were not interested. You had no ambitions in television. You didn't have ambition in uh, film. Uh, and then you know you're you're doing quite well. You've achieved your dream. And then at the age of I believe forty five, forty six, this possibility of this Star Trek show because you you bring up Jean Luc Picard. You this this comes along and. You, what I always found fascinating and, and you verify in the book is you approach this as a Shakespearean role. You took it, which I think is brilliant. You said, oh, this is a television show and this is a, you know, part of a generation of, you know, there's an, an, another Star Trek. I'm going to approach this as if it's Lear or Hamlet. That's the seriousness with which I'm going to take this. And uh, it certainly served you well. It did. But it also made me comfortable because I was familiar with that. However, when I came to review the first season of Next Generation, I wasn't altogether happy with the work I'd done. I thought it was too internal, too restrained, too solitary, too unconnected with the others. So I resolved that from the start of the second season, I would begin to open him up and let him out. Mm -hmm. And that continued for seven years, seven years, and four movies, and then three seasons of Picard, which only wrapped about 15 months ago. It feels like you started to let yourself have more fun. Is that what it is? The, one of my favorite moments in, in the book is telling this, because I haven't told it to many people, that uh, halfway through the first season of Next Generation, uh, and we were a wonderful group of, of actors. I, I fell for Jonathan and Brent and Marina and Gates and all of them very sudden, and LeVar mm -hmm. and Michael. I mustn't leave anybody out. That's it. <laughs> That's a whole lot. And, and Whoopi when she joined yeah, us. Yeah. And um, I, one day I called a meeting because I, I had thought, I'm captain of the Enterprise. But because I'd led companies on, in the theater, I felt this should be my role here. I'm a leader, not just of Starfleet, but of this band of people who are working these endless days, 12, 14, sometimes 16 hour days to get all this done. So I called this meeting and I said, all right, um, listen, um, what it seems to me you don't, people don't understand is that there are two sets of, of, of work going on here. There's the work we do and the time off that we get occasionally and, um, you know, a day, a long weekend. And then there's the rest of the crew and people in the office who are here every single day and working brutal hours. We have got to make their lives easier. And the problem is we are having too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Every Christmas season, it's the same thing. Demands for more podcast episode comes in and we've got to meet those demands. We got to mail out those podcasts. We got to get them in the mail. Oh, I didn't well, guess what? That. With stamps.com, all you need is a computer and printer. Then you're ready for that holiday rush. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I just remember last year when we were stuffing podcasts into envelopes and licking them and putting on the stamps. It was crazy in here. Yeah. No we more. So not with stamps.com. They even send you a free scale so you have everything you need to get started. Because whenever I go to mail stuff out, I'm like, where's my scale? Well, they got the scale ready there for you. Now, taking care of orders on the go is even easier with the Stamps.com mobile app. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. Get your business ready for the holiday rush. Get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up at Stamps.com slash Conan for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash Conan. That was the <laughs> phrase that has still not left me today. Yeah. I mean, I heard Jonathan Frakes say it to me. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're having too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> but you and got that, over it. That was your instinct, and you got over it. Yes, yes, because it it was limiting. Yes, restricting. You know, and and the older I get, as I hope in part this conversation has illustrated, 
I get looser, and 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 I I um, attach things that are inside myself to my outside life, mm -hmm. so it's not, you know. Uh, well, there's a, it's, it's something, it's, there's an un unclenching that can happen. That's the way I feel of it, that, that I, that I feel about it, which is I, you know, even though we're star years apart, <laughs> light years apart in so many ways, I have, there's my early years where I'm just, I've got a tight, tight, tight grip and I am just determined, so determined in so many ways. And then I find over time, there's this acceptance of flaws, of acceptance of my flaws, acceptance of how silly this all is. And I start started to have a lot more fun. And that's revelatory because the younger me would say, well, if you're having fun, the work can't be good. And it's bullshit. It's completely untrue. And I was intimidated the first time that you came on the program, I remember I've not met you and I just know you by this man, this man, Royal Shakespeare Company and so accomplished and who am I to talk to him? And you were funny and delightful and self-deprecating and silly. And I think uh, that was a real gift. That was a real gift to see that if someone who's accomplished all this can can let go a little bit. That's a great, that's a great gift to, to give to people. Thank you.